Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Nichols. I'm a thoracic surgeon, that is chest surgeon here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. A special interest of mine is the surgical management of gastroesophageal reflux disease and surgery on the esophagus uh, for that problem. With me today is Dr. David Katzka of our division of gastroenterology, and David too has a keen interest in the medical management of gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD as it's commonly called. And I'm gonna start out by letting David just give us some of the highlights of GERD, particularly from a medical standpoint. Thank you, Frank. As you know, GERD is an extremely common problem in the United States. Up to about 40% of the United States has reflux symptoms at some time or another. More importantly, we know that reflux disease in general is increasing in our country. There are probably many factors that are contributing to that. Factors such as, unfortunately, we're getting more overweight, perhaps things that we eat, the way in which we eat have contributed to the marked increase in GERD in our society. Fortunately for most people, lifestyle changes alone can be simple enough to make patients feel better. Changes such as eating more slowly, certain types of foods, over-the-counter antacids and medications can be very effective. But unfortunately for some patients, their reflux is much more serious and they need more uh, rigid therapy. These therapies, as we, as we know, may include proton pump inhibitors such as lanzoprazole or omeprazole, which are generally very safe and effective drugs. But in the past few years, we know that as we study these medications more, there may be some side effects that we're starting to learn about. Some of these side effects might include osteoporosis or a weakening of the bone, certain vitamin deficiencies such as B12, and some rare reports of kidney disease. Although we still feel that these drugs are very safe, Unfortunately, for many patients with reflux, these drugs require chronic use. In other words, the severity of reflux is such that they really need to take these drugs for the rest of their life. This is a bit concerning because we know that although these drugs are safe over a 10 or 20 year period, these drugs have not been out long enough to know whether they're safe for 30, 40, or 50 years, and that raises, us some, raises some concern. Because of this, we've had surgical procedures for reflux disease which have been excellent and the main surgical procedure is called a fundoplication. In this operation, uh, surgeons like Dr. Nichols will take the top of the stomach and wrap it around the bottom of the esophagus with the idea of bolstering that valve, that weak sphincter that allows content from the stomach to come up into the esophagus. Unfortunately, however, there have been several drawbacks recently appreciated from, the, from this procedure. In the first place, it's major surgery, even though we can do it laparoscopically it is still a, an operation which requires recovery and does have potential complications. More concerningly, however, is that the long-term benefits of this procedure are not as robust as we would like them to be. Unfortunately, even in the best of hands 10 years out, there are still many patients who either have to have the procedure redone or need to go back on medical therapy to help control their symptoms. Finally, like any major operation, it changes your body forever. And sometimes this procedure, although it may be wonderful for the reflux, may lead to some other symptoms, such as flatulence, inability to belch, gas bloat symptoms, and sometimes some trouble swallowing because after all, we are bolstering that valve and making it a little tighter. Because of these problems, it's been very important for us to try to work on new procedures which might treat the reflux effectively, but perhaps not have all those side effects. And that's where Dr. Nichols comes into play. Thank you, David. I've been involved with uh, reflux surgery or gastroesophageal reflux disease surgery since the mid-1980s. And as David talked about, the most common operation for the patients that do need surgery is a fundoplication, where you actually take the stomach and wrap the stomach around the lower portion of the esophagus. But that's not a standardized operation. Terms that people might hear out there are Nissen fundoplication, Belsey fundoplication, toupee, or door things that just are, are, are not uh, commonplace terms, okay, that people, uh, people face. I review a tremendous number of op notes on patients who've had fundoplication operations, and there doesn't appear to be a standard way of doing it. There's certain steps every surgeon goes through. I'd like to think that I do it the same way each time. But no, each patient is somewhat unique and individualized, and, and trying to standardize the fundoplication operation just isn't possible. That's what then leads into this new technology that I'm very excited about. It's called the Lynx device. And what the Lynx is is a magnetic necklace that we can laparoscopically, so it does involve surgery, but laparoscopically, minimally invasive surgery, place this magnetic necklace around the lower esophageal sphincter. That is the junction that exists between a patient's esophagus and their stomach. 
And with this magnetic necklace, it's dynamic. It can contract back and forth. Food, okay, liquids, people drink, can get down into the esophagus. But the necklace at the right point in time contracts or closes back down again to prevent that food, okay, and acid and other products in the stomach from backing back up. And I have here, okay, that necklace. And this is something that's been provided to me by the company, but you can see it's very much like a necklace that moves back and forth with these little magnetic beads. And we can surgically implant this around the esophagus, and we use my finger just like the esophagus there, okay, around the esophagus, around my finger like the esophagus, uh, so that food can get down and inside because we can stretch this back and forth, and yet uh, food and fluid from the stomach can't reflux or regurgitate back up. This device, okay, has been put in now in over 500 patients worldwide. A trial was just reported in February of 2013's New England Journal of Medicine, looking critically at 100 patients that have had this device put in primarily in the United States, but some in Europe. And what it's shown is that the device is safe. It's only been put in, okay, in a small number, not thousands and thousands of patients yet, but the device is safe. There have been no deaths with the implantation of this device. One thing everyone would worry about is would the device eventually erode through or wear its way into the esophagus? There have been no events, okay, of that occurring. And people symptomatically seem to be much better with the device. It does not appear in the number of patients put in so far that it has the side effects of traditional fundoplication surgery. People, by and large, do not need medication after the surgery or markedly less medication. They do not seem to have the bloaty sensation that can come on with typical fundoplication surgery. And David talked about flatulence, which is passing more gas down below. That symptom, too, seems to be less in the patients having the Lynx device. Uh, I'm very excited about the Lynx uh, technology, but Lynx is not uh, for every, uh, every patient. Uh, the Lynx device is not appropriate for patients who have large hiatal hernias. Hiatal hernia is basically where the stomach has migrated up into the chest. Uh, hiatal hernias are very common. If they're small hiatal hernias, the Lynx device is applicable. It's not uh, suggested to be put in patients who have Barrett's esophagus, which is a severe erosion of the esophagus, potentially a precancerous type change. The Lynx also is not felt to be appropriate at this point in time in patients who have severe esophagitis, also a bad erosion or sunburning of the esophagus. And the classification scale goes from A to D, and it's not uh, recommended in patients with grade C or D esophagitis. Also, if patients have uh, excessive weight, okay, the Lynx device is, is not appropriate at this point in time. The Lynx device is not going to be offered at a huge, large number of centers across the United States. It'll be select centers and surgeons that are trained in this procedure. It is available at Mayo Clinic in Florida, Mayo Clinic here in Rochester, and also Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And if you're interested and think that the Lynx device is applicable to you, uh, you can uh, find us at mayoclinic.org. I have some slides, okay, that might illustrate uh, better the uh, Lynx technology, and with the slides are some animated videos actually showing uh, the Lynx device. So what, what you basically see here is patients, okay, and here's where they have very low symptoms, okay? The severity of the symptoms is very, very low, and on this scale, here's where their symptom, okay, complexes is quite high. The majority of patients reflected by this yellow can be effectively treated with uh, medication. But there is this gap, and here's a group of patients that have high, okay, symptom rates, high dissatisfaction with their quality of life, and they're failing medication. And these are the patients, okay, that are best treated by surgery. A very small percentage of these patients, okay, need what's known as a fundoplication uh, operation. That is, we actually take a portion of the stomach and wrap it around the esophagus. And that's the operation that is not very standardized, done differently by different surgeons, and also uh, basically has a number of side effects. We're hoping, okay, that this new device, this magnetic necklace that we can place around the esophagus, that it's going to help with a large number of these patients saving surgery only for the most complex of heartburn patients. Here's basically what we see is, is what I say current therapy. We can treat the acid or the fluid, okay, that's causing people discomfort in the stomach with medication, okay, and again, that applies to the overwhelming majority of the patients, but here we diagrammatically see what's known as the uh, lower esophageal sphincter. It's, it's basically muscles that keep things from going back up, okay, the esophagus, to keep food and fluid in your stomach from regurgitating back up, to keep your esophagus from being exposed, okay, to the acids and the toxins in your stomach. 
And if medicines aren't working, then a fundoplication operation, which we see diagrammatically here, is where you can actually take. This is that patient's stomach, and we wrap the stomach all the way around like a donut around the esophagus. And that's a surgical procedure, the most common known as a Nissen fundoplication. Here's Lynx. Lynx is this magnetic uh, necklace uh, that basically is small and slender. It doesn't involve, when we put it in patients, a lot of dissection. That is a lot of uh, disruption of the patient's normal, okay, anatomy or normal stomach. And the hope is that we can actually wrap this necklace around uh, the lower portion of the esophagus uh, and uh, prevent people from having their, their reflux symptoms. These are these little titanium capsules or beads, and within the beads are basically magnets, and the magnets can slide back and forth, okay, on this, uh, this necklace. And this necklace, okay, can encircle the esophagus right above the stomach. Basically what the Lynx device now looks in place surrounding, okay, the esophagus where, okay, a person's natural okay, lower esophageal sphincter is, uh, but their natural sphincter just isn't working enough, and this necklace, okay, sort of augments, if you will, the strength of that lower esophageal sphincter. Here, then, is an animation that comes to us from the company, and here's a patient's esophagus coming down right here. Here's that lower esophageal sphincter. You can see the fluid, okay, both acid and bile moving back and forth in the esophagus. We encircle the Lynx device around the esophagus, and the fluid now can no longer back up into a person's esophagus, and yet at the same point in time when they swallow, the food can make it down through the esophagus, and the necklace stretches at the appropriate point in time to let the food into the stomach, but doesn't allow the fluid to back back up. Thing we have, again, provided to me by the company, is a barium esophagram. So the patients have actually now swallowed some dye, and this isn't a real person. Here's the necklace in place, uh, encircling the lower portion of the esophagus, and this is them swallowing, and here is basically dye, or it could also be a fluid bol bolus, going down and into the stomach. And you can see how it'll work its way right through the necklace. The necklace doesn't cause it to hang up and down into the person's stomach.